there's this idea that, you know, mothers, once you become a mother, you, you are sort of holier than thou and you are, you are, you know, not supposed to mess up and not supposed to swear anymore and, and not supposed to have any negative emotions. And that's just not the case. I mean, all humans are human throughout the course of their existence on Earth. And if anything, motherhood is the most stressful time in your life. So I think this, this just sort of um, shined a spotlight on things that nobody was really talking about. That moms are stressed and they swear and they want to have wine sometimes and that's okay. And that letting loose and, and, is, and that sort of self-care is what allows us to be better moms when we come back to our kids. Every mom needs a little bit of time off. A Bad Mom's Christmas is different from bad moms in the fact that our characters are not just stressed out moms, they are also rebellious kids. So it's more dimensional, it's a little raunchier, if that's even possible, uh, but it still has the same amount of heart where you can see yourself in each one of these women and your story is being told. Catherine and Mila and I are good friends in real life, so I think that helps. Um, we feel very safe with each other. Um, we're willing to try anything on screen. I think also the characters were so well written individually and they all sort of serve this purpose or are this stereotype of a bunch of moms you know and Catherine's the wild one and, and Mila's the working mom and Kiki is the stay-at-home mom that's constantly covered in barf. It's, and I think they're, they're sort of together, they're, they're greater than the sum of their parts. They really um, let each mom know, oh, I see a little bit of myself in that person. Kiki is always a little frazzled. That's just part of her personality. Um, but I will say she learned, I think she starts off in a place where she learned a lot from being friends with Amy and Carla. Um, having a group of friends as a mom is, it's just necessary. It's really, it's paramount to have someone to complain to and to learn from and just to listen, whether or not you get advice. But Kiki's in a much better place in her marriage. Uh, she says what she needs when she needs Kent to watch the kids. And she has a much better relationship with Kent because she stood up for herself. By introducing our mothers, you sort of see why we are who we are. I mean, I think your, your parents can always push your buttons because they installed your buttons, you know? And, and with Kiki, her nervousness um, and desire to um, stay in line and be soft and easygoing comes from her mom's overbearing nature. I've known Cheryl for over 10 years, and I adore her because there's nothing not to adore. She's a super funny, outgoing lady, and the, the idea of being paired with her made me so excited, A, because we were friends, so we had this relationship, and B, because Kiki's mom is supposed to have had her at 18 years old, so they're much closer in age, and it just, everything felt perfect. I adore working with Cheryl. As a directing team, they each have sort of what they cover, and they just sort of make it work. I mean, this is a lot of people. When you have, you know, 12 main characters, it's a lot, but they are just sort of walk around kind of handling it with elegance, and they write really well for women, I think, because they understand women. Um, which is very unique to have uh, a male writer, male writers that can write this well and this honestly from a female perspective. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more coverage from Muse.